I wanted to do a video that explained my analysis of the rise of Phoebe Bridges over the recent and not so recent years. What I could have done was made a 10 to 15 minute video that detailed her writing and playing songs since age 11 in California, followed by some incredibly high profile collaborations at the time, such as collaborations with Noah Gunderson, Julian Baker, The National, Manchester Orchestra, just to name a few. I could have then gone on to say that she released two very well received solo albums and that really that's why she's done so well but uh, ultimately I feel like doing so would be incredibly disingenuous. Instead what I'd like to do is say some words on why I think Phoebe Bridges's popularity appears to have skyrocketed but in reality has just been a steady and stable increase based on her hard work and style. Uh, keeping in mind that this is completely my opinion and I'm not qualified in any way whatsoever to speak on this topic, uh, but thank you for listening because you're here anyway for some reason, so thank you. So right from the start, Bridges and her music have been incredibly relatable in a sense that if you relate to them, you should probably consider speaking to someone uh, about present or past trauma, perhaps. In one of her 2017 songs, Funeral, she sings about how she's really not having a great time. Quote, Jesus Christ, I'm so blue all the time, and that's just how I feel. Always have, and I always will. But also, at the same time, in the same song, but obviously not at the same time because they're words and you can't say word, two words at the same time, uh, she draws attention to the fact that someone has it worse than her. I think that if the feeling she sings about, the feeling where you're like, yeah, this sucks, but someone has it worse, is not a universal feeling, then the Pope is not Catholic. Bridges says about her song, Killer, that her song, Killer, is entirely about toxic energy and toxic feelings, and I don't think I've gotten bad reception from it, ever. People who come up to me and understand that it isn't like my toxic energy is affirmed, it's like, Oh my god, I hate feeling controlling. So yeah, no offense, but I think that's quite relatable. We all get toxic feelings and toxic energy from time to time. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that Bridges songwriting is relatable, but it's also sad, which makes it more relatable. I feel that in some sense, the type of people who may be drawn to Bridges' work are the type of people who may need some form of release in a creative or melancholy sense. Generally, if you're drawn to this kind of art, you're not in a tip-top A1 mood, you're just a bit, hmm, could listen to some music kind of vibe. This brings me to my next point. Phoebe Bridges remains true to her style and hasn't made it her overarching goal to adapt to a market. We see all too often artists that start out with their sad, folky songs, gain popularity amongst fans of sad, folky music, and then once they gain popularity and start filling out smaller venues, they realize that, oh, I've got a bunch of sad boys just chilling here. And they try and, you know, branch out into something that's more accessible to the masses. Recently, for example, we've seen Coulter Wall go from a big, sad murder ballad kind of boy uh, to a more happy, uh, more major key filled uh, country singer with the release of his appropriately titled Western Swing and Waltzes and other punchy songs. Artists know that the big money is made by selling out shows. Artists also know that making accessible music and getting people to dance is a great way to sell out shows and this is what they try and do but not always in a natural and genuine way. They often focus too much on the trends and their analytics and try to aim for this potential increase in market share which is great in a business sense, but not so great in an artistic sense. Perhaps the timing of a global pandemic has dissuaded Bridges from trying to fill out venues, but in reality, her latest release is just really more sad songs from the heart. People like this. This is obviously what people are looking for because Bridges is doing great. As a side note, Bridges' Instagram is very funny, and I feel like this helps too in some way. It's not your normal sanitized and sellable major record label appropriate Instagram influencer account. It's an account of a person who's an artist and who is unafraid to alienate people who may not be the biggest fans of hers, but also invites fans and perhaps some outliers in through more of a like relatable style and memes. Um, 
which really we're just all here for. So thank you for listening.